Welcome to The Advocate, where thought-provoking topics are discussed with no holds barred here on Plus TV Africa. We basically call a spade by its name. Today, my focus is on the behavior of the LASMA officials and what their major purpose is. Tolu, on the other hand, speaks on reforming the justice system in Nigeria. Elijah speaks on the necessity of transparency and timeliness in leadership. And finally, Olua Kayode tells us not to blame the federal government, but our state government. Sit back, and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Do stay with us. What's up with LASMA? First, I must state that it's super important that citizens respect officers and officials who have been assigned by relevant authorities to serve us. However, are they really serving us? If I curate all my unpleasant experiences with the officers of the Lagos State Transport Management Authority, I'm sure I'd make another cinema hit. Why have most of these LASMA officers decided to go beyond their job roles to execute what's not within their jurisdiction? Another critical issue that baffles me here is the behavior of a LASMA officer patiently waiting for you to get into trouble and then immediately surface out of the blues to get you booked. Where's the place of service by guiding citizens appropriately on the road usage? This is underlying behavior of extortion, which is commiserate to their perception of you and the type of car you drive. I remember one of them jumping into my car at CMS and charging me um, 250,000 naira. And you know, you know how it ended. When these officers are recruited and onboarded, I'm really concerned. Who, what do they really communicate to them? Or is it just to hit the road, catch people, and wix their cars to their HQ in Oshodi? I don't even want to recount my experience at Oshodi. It was one of my most annoying experiences. Thankfully, I had to use my social capture to get out. But a more serious note, when are we really going to do something about the unruly acts of these LASMA officers? The people that have been put in place to serve us and now more interested in extorting from us. This is one of the many reasons why driving in Lagos is not a pleasurable experience for me and many other people out there I want to believe. I even heard that they give them targets of defaulting vehicles and cars to apprehend. I don't know how true that is, but if that's anything to go by, is that even a proper KPI? If their success comes largely from this, then we can understand why they would rather wait for you to get into trouble than help you get out of trouble. Are we cursed from having a sane society that works? What's the way forward here? Lasma, Kilon Shele. Only you can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car, so you just... <laughs> it's not about having a car. I mean, it's, it's about the experience. I'm just yeah. kidding. It's about the experience, yeah. I'm just kidding. You, you know, for, for me, when you look at Lasma, so many things come to mind. First of all, uh, yes, last month will be blamed, but the state agency or the government that is supposed to do the tagging and, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Putting all the signages on the streets. Have they done it? Hmm. Because I think for, I'll give you an example. Today, when I was coming, I got, okay. Um, when I was leaving VI last week, I stopped by road. I'm not very concerned with the roads on VI. So when I was driving into that street, I had to stop. Just when I was getting in, I stopped and I asked, is this one way? Mm. He said, no. So I went ahead. Now, I, I mean, can I go through? He go said, through, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, and so I went in. And I, when I asked, I was looking around to see other guys too, how they were reacting. Maybe, hey, this guy won't enter. Go be so I went in. When I finished, came out from where I was going, I had to ask again, can I do a U-turn and go out this way? Or it's one way. Mm. Then he told me, oh, no, if you are driving, this is one way. Go through this way. Now, a typical Lagosian is in a hurry. Mm. Wouldn't stop to ask. Ask questions. Yeah. And there is no signal, nothing showing, no indicating signage. that, no sign anything, At showing all. that mm. this is one way. Mm. So you get in there, and the last more official comes to you, who is 
probably poorly trained, who doesn't have um, a proper ability to, you know, do, com not just communicate, but do analysis, yeah. read, you know, okay. psychological, so, okay, you know, you know, be able know. to, you know, mm. analyze you and see if you're doing, saying the right thing or wrong and just assumes that you're lying or doesn't care and just arrest you. So a lot of things come into being and I dare say that they have in a way become a disappointment to the street, to the road or road users because they are there and they just make life miserable mm. for many people. Mm. And what is even sad in my view is the way they won't carry out their duty. They carry it out with, in my view, less dignity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so sad. I imagine being, having a father who works at Lasma and seeing him run after buses in such manner, mm. being insulted no, no in no such manner. Yeah. There, there is no dignity, no dignity of service. Of service, you know. thank you. Mm. So they just work. They just go out and just do whatever it is that they feel they have to do. And that is wrong. So in my, the first thing is, first thing first, we're talking Lasma. Lasma, they need to get their acts together. They need to work better from the leadership from angle. the leadership mm. and every other thing i don't know some will say if you speak to some people in last month they'll tell you that they don't have the full uh, liberty to carry out what they want to do mm. that there are some like you suggested all this noise Not about tricks. you know controls and buttons being pressed from different areas that's one angle so last month is failing in that aspect the second one is the people themselves the drivers road users we are so impatient, so rude, so intolerant at times that it will make an average road user lose his mind, mm -hmm. his or her mind. Let you know the last more officer whose salary is small, who is under the sun, who has been battered, mm -hmm. and who doesn't even know what his child is going to eat because yeah. the salary is not able to. So that is why there's so much road rage between the driver and... Because I've, I've been in a place, I was driving somebody and an officer stopped me. And lady, the person stopped me. It was like, someone in my car said, what's, what's he looking for? What's he looking for? I said, relax. They have a right, they have the to, right stop to stop you. Yeah, sure. You don't have any excuse. No when facts. you are stopped, you must wait for them to carry out. When they are now out overstepping their boundaries, then you can't speak. And even that, an officer of the law, you can't refundle an officer of the law. There's a limit to the kind of words you can use to an officer of the law. Sure. So we need to know all these things. You need to, even no matter what they do, the best way is charge them to court. You get it. Mm. Record it, charge them to court. And that's, you know, that's like a... That's, that's a, like a different... Okay. <laughs> you you get it. Really you know, those are, no, no I've, seen, I've seen people who have tried last month to court and they've won. Oh. Because they stood on their grounds. They had all their it's facts. It's have time. And they are, okay. Exactly. I mean, how will I leave that's my, the thing. my base? I'm, I'm charged. I don't have that kind of time. It's not the time. Elijah, before we come to Tolu, what do you think? Well, this matter, you see, I agree with him to an extent, especially when he said... He has the right to stop you. Yeah. We citizens, we don't trust government. No, I don't want to use we. A lot because of, a lot of, of yeah. citizens, but I'm not part of the we. <laughs> I don't trust government. Mm. Even yeah. though I know they air in some area, mm. but I choose to trust them for the betterment of our country. Yeah. But a lot of citizens don't trust the government. They don't mm. even understand what governance is. Yeah, exactly. And then the people in government, those people that are in government agencies, police and mm -hmm. the, the last one, they themselves are abusing privileges. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So they don't understand this thing. Number one, like you said, uniform per and we extend it now by extension to uniform, uniform personnel, person. not just yes. last month. Mm. You don't have rights as a uniform personnel, you don't have rights because you're a uniform personnel to run for a citizen. Well, of course. At the other hand, too, the citizen too should respect you because mm -hmm. you are respecting the law. They yeah. said governments should be of laws rather than of men. Mm. So for the issue of last month, Education is very important. Okay. They should be properly oriented. And then they should also learn how to communicate effectively with mm. empathy. Let me give you an instance that happened during the lock, not lockdown, not during lockdown. I think after the lockdown, there was this couple of them, that period that they were enforcing news masks and all these mm. things. It's not last month, this time right? it was police. I don't know if you saw the video trending. Okay. The woman was pregnant. She was in the car with her husband. And the way that she, they said she came down for the car to use her safe. The husband was trying to help her. The next thing was the police appreciated her. Oh, you're not with your nose mask. Blah, 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 blah. The next thing, they refund to her and they wanted to arrest the husband. And the, I have children in the car. Now, let's assume the police were doing their job. But do you have to do it without wisdom? Mm. Without empathy? You see that the woman is pregnant. Why they refund? It's not everything you must always to want to arrest. Yeah. You mustn't arrest everything. So yeah. I'll give you a scenario. I, I remember I was watching a documentary on the, on the internet. A woman was a very poor woman. I think it happened in the US. She was mm. she was so poor, they, they didn't have anything to eat. So she, her yes. child went, I don't know, she yeah. went to the, she and her child, they went mm. to a particular shopping mall to buy something. The process, 
like the, she stole something from the mall. And the shop owner called the police. The policeman came there and saw the woman. After assessing the whole thing, he said, is this matter, it's not matter of arrest, it's hunger. Okay, mm. madam, he paid for what she wanted to buy, what yeah. she stole, and told her not to do it again. That's and let it. her go away. So it's not everything you it's must do. It's emotionally intelligent. Well, I, I we should, we should be wise. Tolu. We should yeah. be wise. Yeah. Tolu? On that note. <laughs> yeah, Tolu, um, what's your experience with mm. this whole shenanigan? Yeah, you know, um, let's not start with my experience. I mean, Victor, you pretty much nailed it on the head. The problem is a problem of, of vision, you know, to start with. The vision is wrong. And once the vision is wrong, the execution is wrong. You know, if someone that is supposed to protect and defend has been given the mandate to attack and punish, naturally, you know, the, everything else goes wrong from there. You know, I think if you go to sign up to Sina claims, you, you know, claims, you find that um, people have been told to protect and defend. Mm. So a citizen will feel safe when this is someone that has been, you know, mandated to protect and defend them. You know, in this case, it's different, you know, because their agenda, their objective, their vision is a bit different. So naturally, the, all the things that they do just align with what they've asked them to do. I think the solution is very simple, to be quite honest. I think they need to depersonalize LASMA. I mean, 90% of the work that LASMA does can be done with technology. Mm. What is done in, in advanced countries. There's, there's, there's nothing to that work. Arrestable, taking one. I mean, those things, everything can be done with technology. Mm. So I understand some people lose their jobs. So perhaps we won't take them to the control room and all yeah. they're doing is just, you know, operating computers. Mm. There's yeah, nothing that last month do. You know, in fact, 80 to 90% of what law enforcement does in Nigeria would help with technology. And, True. you know, I'll speak a little more to it in my, when I talk about justice and the issues that, you know, uh, we're facing with the justice system in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Tolu. All right, Tolu joins us after the break. <laughs> 